Hello, welcome back to the Advanced Pong Tutorials. Uh, in the last one, we completed our first level, which is exciting. And uh, now we're going to talk about how to actually go from level one to level two and from two to three. Uh, it's not as much code as you'd actually think because of our ability to copy it over. Uh, we did have one little glitch at the end of the last tutorial, and that was the player after they won. It continuously said player one wins round one and it continuously tried to move the ball a little bit. So you could see that it wasn't fully shutting down. Um, so we want to go ahead and also, and also it was changing the round by one quite a bit. You can see we ended up with a round eight, and it really shouldn't be. It should just be round two. Um, one thing we could do is instead of change round one by one, if that is creating a problem, we could just do set round one or set round to two, uh, that's gonna be one way to fix that issue. Uh, another thing is we're gonna go to control and we're gonna just, you notice before we use the stop all once the computer won, we can't stop all if the, if the player wins because that would shut down the entire game. But what we can do is put the stop all block in here and we can just say stop this script. What that means is it will stop the entire lineup attached to this this entire row. So now when you get to five points, you won't have that glitch of the ball just barely moving and it continuously saying player one runs round one. So uh, that's just a little tip to help you out to solve that glitch. And now I believe we are ready to go to round two and talk about how we can make that happen. So the first thing that I would do at this point is probably go to the top of round one right click on that and say duplicate that's going to give you another entire branch of that game and it's going to look kind of scary because it's so much code just go ahead and put it beside it for now and now we're going to modify this now if we didn't modify this at all we'd have major problems because these are both set to go when the flag is clicked so you're now going to have two scripts trying to run at the same time at the start of the game so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to detach the entire round two code um, and we're going to get rid of this because we can't have it start at the start of the game let's just get rid of that you can see under events that we also have when I receive a certain message so for round two I'm gonna go ahead and say when I receive player one wins round one that must mean that it's time to start round two so I've got the set round to one. I don't actually need that because I already did that in the bottom of my code for level one. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Some things we're gonna use, some things we're not. Uh, does it make sense to change the scores back to zero? Absolutely it does, because this is a whole new game, a whole new level at least. And um, yeah, we need to reset them or else it's already gonna be equal to five for the player. Um, and it's gonna be equal to whatever it was for the computer. So that's not good. So we declare our variables, we reset them back to zero. Um, set size of the ball, this is, what I'm gonna recommend is that you try to get level two and three working with very minimal changes at the start because it does get kind of more advanced right now. And you might wanna do all kinds of fun stuff like things moving around and maybe different backdrops and maybe, um, things that teleport the ball from one place to another. But let's just try to make level two and three so that it works. And then if it works, we can play with it and have fun and, and make it our own. Uh, so set the size of the ball. I'm actually gonna go down to 25% instead of 35% because that is an easy change that we can make to the ball, uh, which could make the game a little bit more difficult and it won't really affect much else. We do want it to go to the middle we don't care really which direction it points at the start. I can leave it at negative 45 if we want to. Again, something you might do later on is have it randomly point in a direction. So look for the randomizer block for extra points of like how we can maybe make this a little bit more interesting. So it doesn't always do things the same way. If we continue down this path, we're, we're moving by 10 steps, and we know that's the speed of the ball. So again, if level two is supposed to be more difficult, why don't we change that to 15 steps for now and see what that looks like? We still want the if on edge bounce. We still want this condition of checking to see if it's under six. 
Um, and let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. This is still going to be the same, the touching red, the adding a point going to the middle. We actually don't have to touch any of that. The green is going to be the same. The paddle is probably going to be the same, unless you want to get into maybe making it turn a random amount here instead of a set amount like 90. Maybe that's how your game is going to get more difficult. But again, for now, let's just leave it like that. Um, if player score, okay, so obviously the message is going to now be different. Player one wins round two is what we want. And again, we can customize this more later, but let's just do the absolute basics. We're not going to broadcast player one wins round one anymore. What are we going to broadcast? We're going to broadcast player one wins round two. Okay. Um, we're going to set the round to three probably at this point because that's where we're about to go. And again, we're going to stop this script so that this script doesn't continue as well. If the computer gets to five, it's the exact same thing. Better luck next time and stop the entire game. That is the end of it, right? There are some other things that we could change. We could get into changing the size of the computer paddle, for example. Um, or we could get into the speed of the paddle. So let's take a look at those because they are simple enough changes. Uh, the player one paddle, maybe when it gets a message, uh, events again. So when I receive player one wins around one, its size used to be 100%. Let's go ahead and just kind of play with that and set size to, I don't know, we can try 75%. Okay. So the player paddle just got smaller once round two began. And now let's go to the uh, computer paddle, which was at 100%. We could even do something like uh, events, when I receive, computer wins, or player one wins round one. Maybe I want to get more difficult. So maybe I actually want to set the size to something even bigger than 100%. Let's just try to see what happens if I do 110% for that. And again, I'm just playing with numbers. Uh, and the reason why it's going to stay 110% is because in the only forever block for this, it doesn't ever ask it to go back to 100%. It's only asking for that once. So when it gets this message, it should make it bigger and should leave it that way. I'm now going to make my game space bigger so I can kind of see what's going on here. And I'm going to stop the game and start it again. And I do kind of expect that bugs will be in this game right now because I've just made a lot of changes to this. And uh, usually it's best to make one change at a time and test it. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm trying to do a bunch of steps at once. So here we go. We've got uh, round one happening so far as I'd expect with the computer not really being that good. And again, I want round one to be easy. So that's good so far. And you can start to think as I play this, if we had multiple rounds, how much time it's actually going to take to like test all these levels, right? So we're gonna talk about cheat codes in a bit too and how a cheat code could be used to like skip levels and just test the level that you're talking about. But right now I kinda of wanna see the full process. So there it was, that was level one. I can see player one wins round one and whoa, the ball just really took off. I can see we're in round two, but that went really fast. <laughs> so much faster than I want it to be, okay. But I can see some other things too. Like for example, the player paddle or the computer paddle is bigger. I'm definitely smaller. The ball's smaller. So there are some good things. I think the only thing is, is that I've just made this too difficult, too fast. Okay, so it's going so fast, it's going right through the paddle. Okay, so we're gonna stop that. And uh, I'm gonna go back and adjust the speed of the ball, if you remember. Uh, that was done through here. It was moving 15 steps, which ended up being a lot. So let's go ahead and change that to 12. And rather than play the game, or actually, I'm just going to make it 11. Rather than play the game again and waste your time having me watch the game, that's gonna, I'm going to stop the tutorial here. And I'm going to start the next tutorial by showing you how you can make a cheat code that would just bypass the first level so you could see what level two looks like right away. So don't forget to save. Again, we've just got two levels so far, and uh, we're excited about that. We're going to save it. You could download a copy as well if you want to. And uh, next time we're going to go on to how to 
use a cheat code to skip levels and also how to make our third level. Hope you're having fun so far. Keep up the good work.